Hi, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again. Now, I've already produced my post for you on this Sunday, but I had another thought that I wanted to share with the message of this day. And that is that I've talked to you about the best uh, life that I can imagine that could be shaped up as we the people. Now, that's just me alone. I'm sure when I, we bring in that uh, difference that you bring, it'll make it even much more lovelier. But I do at least present one. And I might say to you that if you're trying to do, trying to achieve, trying to accomplish, then you might pay attention to certain signs that might be on the road of righteousness. They bring with them signs. Now, when we start talking about righteousness, we have uh, presentations before us that suggest what that might be. For instance, we have talked about a God. We talked about a God that loved us, which to do so would be righteous. He made us that when we were lost and didn't know the way that he allowed his son, which was really just a representation of himself, like the father, like the son, you know, like you, the father, you want your son to be just like you, if you've got it going on. And so the son comes down and live on the earth just like we do. Right. And on this earth that he's living on, just like we do, there's all kinds of things going around. Sin, lying, cheating, stealing, crime, violence, hate, racism, bigotry, you name it. All of that stuff is going on, and Jesus is right there in the midst. And right there in the midst, there are people, other people out there trying to tell folks about God. And what is the effect of it? Nothing. Everything that's going on is representation of evil. And so Jesus comes down and he tells the truth. And those who were faking it didn't like it. They didn't like it. I'm going to tell them the truth. You see, the reason that they didn't like it, Jesus could back the truth up. And uh, alternatives are nothing but lies, so you can't really do anything about backing them up. And so what happened? The story goes that because of his representation of truth, of righteousness, whether it had to do with the spiritual level or whether it had to do with that which was called government on the carnal side, and that was not to be accepted. It was against the order of those who want to run the earth, who claim that power, uh, that the power to run the earth is righteousness, but they claimed it to do it their way. And the spirit was the same thing. And so Jesus had to go. The first sign of the true love of righteousness, of humanity, of God, was that he died before he became a part of everything else. Now, <clears throat> everybody else, whether they were a part of it or not, if they were a part, they were surviving because of it. If they were slaves or indentured servants or whatever, they still were part of it and they survived because of that. And if they were poor out there trying to rob people or steal, they still had were a part of this whole thing. Nobody was different. All of it was a part of this. And so when Jesus died, it was because of the righteousness that was anti what was happening. And the story goes, I don't really know if it's true, but the story goes that the disciples following after Jesus' way ended up experiencing the same kind of life, death. Now, I'm sure that there were many people, men and women, who gave their lives were trying to do right. Some of them might be not trying to do right. They just caught up in the situation and still lost their lives. And I'm not talking about dying of old age or just dying because it was time to die. No, I'm saying society, the system, brought that death on, and they had to go through that. Now, we're talking about things that happened back then, but we have to be able to relate that to things that happened now. We know, for those of you who know a little bit about some history, you know about Gandhi being murdered because he stood for righteousness. You know about Dr. Martin Luther King being murdered. 
because he stood for righteousness. You know about Malcolm X being killed because he stood for righteousness. <clears throat> now, let me ask you something. How many preachers do you know that have been killed for standing up for righteousness? I'm not talking about just standing up in the pulpit preaching, asking you for millions of dollars and writing books so they can be super wealthy. How many preachers telling you about love, telling you about God, telling you about your neighbor? How many do you know that gave their lives for righteousness? Gave their lives to say that all of the other stuff was crooked, that it was not the way of life. And when they did that, they were murdered. They were murdered. So that gives you some example of what it means to stand for righteousness. Now I want to ask you, how many people do you know that's willing to give their lives for righteousness? How many people that you know are willing to give their lives because they will not settle for this system? They will not settle any longer for the way that this system is. Sure, we talk about democracy. Sure, we talk about the best of all of everything. But there's poverty, there's crime, there's violence, there's people suffering. You're getting ripped off at every turn. I went to the store to buy some oil today. A quart of oil, it used to cost $2 or $4 if you went to a service station. Now I'm costing $10. Why? Because they can get it. Big rip off. And this is the world that we live in. And you're asking, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to conform? Well, see, ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a serious matter. When we conform to the ways of the world and then call ourselves children of God, we are lying to ourselves and everybody else that hears us say that, know that we are lying. And if they study the way we live, they are assured that we are lying. So I say that to say, based upon my understanding, I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know what the spiritual powers are going to do in the end. But based upon my understanding, of life and the spirit and God and truth and righteousness. None of us on earth are fit to be in heaven, are fit to be in heaven. Now you might say, well, God is so much love. Let me tell you, the story also said that heaven was filled with angels. And as soon as it got corrupted, those that were corrupted was kicked out. There was no place for the corruption. In righteousness they even said that in the Garden of Eden that righteousness was all over the place and then all of a sudden something happened and when it happened they were kicked out of the place kicked out of what it represented and they said that it has affected us even today so what has changed it's the same old game but I say ladies and gentlemen but people need help. Everybody needs help one time or another. And I say that we always have to be on the money. We always have to be on our P's and Q's if we're righteous because that's what the, the moment the opportunity prevails or ex exists. Righteousness is supposed to respond because it can't do anything else but do the righteous response. I remember that I made a decision as a young boy. Thought I was all of that. And I was going to work a miracle for myself. And I was <clears throat> going to do something that to impress my peers and older guys. I guess I felt older. I was raised by real old people. So you thinking young. No, I left that. So I decided... Well, I've never, I've been some going swimming. In the South, you don't have swimming pools. Or you had, for black people, you had to go find mud holes somewhere or in the lake. And so, but I had been doing some dog paddling, trying to learn how to swim. But as far as stroking, stroking, never been doing the stroking. But I wanted to stroke. I wanted to be able to go out in the deep water with those who could swim. So I decided to go out there one day and practice when no one was out there uh, who could do it. Because I wanted to find out for myself if I could do it and then go and impress the folks. Now, I didn't, now how dumb, <laughs> I mean, how dumb can that be? I convinced myself that I could do it. 
And I went out there when no one else was out there that could help me if I needed help. So I went out there and started dog paddling, got out there in the water a little deep enough so I could start stroking. I started making some strokes and I started moving out there, but I watched enough to get some idea of what to do. Then I looked down the lake or up the lake one way on a tree trunk and I saw a snake. I called it a moccasin. I don't know what it was, but it scared the living hell out of me. <laughs> and I turned around. First I started splapping that water and I realized I wasn't moving. Next thing it seemed like I was flying on the water. But see, this is what I'm saying. My dumb, stupid tail convinced myself that I could swim across that lake and come back. Well, I, I didn't say I was gonna swim back. I'd go up put it down the road, across the bridge, walk back down there. It just, I don't know if I was naked or had some little short hairs on or what. But that was what I was gonna do. But what I taught myself afterwards is that that was as foolish as foolish could be. Why did I say that? Because there were so many people drowning. I mean, almost every day somebody getting, somebody's drowning. And here I am. I mean, people drowning with not lifeguards out there, but with other people that could swim. And here I am out here choosing to be out here when no one was here to help me if I needed it. But that snake, I call that snake being used by God. That was God in that snake, saving my life. Saving my life. Ran my tail out of that distance that I had come through so fast as a crying shame. I have not been back in that lake since. <laughs> I needed him. I didn't know I needed him. When I stepped out there, I was going to do what I said I was going to do. Nothing could stop me. And I stepped out there, I jumped out there. Like so, whew. But a power, I guess, had some need for me. And what need could that power have had for me? I can see it right now. Me, standing up before you, giving you this testimony, but not just this testimony, but using this to back up all the stuff that I've been telling you. That's what it's saving me here for, because that's what I've been doing. You might not have been listening, but that wasn't my job. My job was to step out there and do it, believing that you will listen. I believe that you will listen. I know you just need the right touch. I saw you jump out there and saw someone come up and tell you that, that the lies that they tell you were not going to be lies. They're going to call them alternative truths. So you can call them a truth. It's just a different truth. But it really was a lie. But by saying that to you, so many people in America accepted that, that lie. So I know you believe a bunch of stuff. You just might believe the truth. And my mission is to make sure that you get a chance to hear it where I'm at. And, it, <clears throat> and as you hear it, you will see changes being made because the empowerment will be measured with the numbers and you will see that it takes the people to bring about the change but it begins with one it begins with you thank you